in a vehicle. Get out of your vehicle now, turn it off, get on the ground, you are under arrest. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who told me this truth and salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabal, back with another quick lesson, Lord willing to edify and defeat the lambs. Avi Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh the Holy Spirit, Rakakwadash, Lord willing to edify and strain to the point. Now, the video in the introduction, um, I've seen this video, brother, sent it in the chat from. From the um, YouTube page, GMS News Amath. All right, now it says martial law prep time is short. And that video is from another video, another page, another source. Says this is what happens if you pump gas past curfew in our free country. So this is supposed to be in uh, Minneapolis due to the, um, the crowds, the tension. And all these other things um, pretty much revolving around this um, this Edomite that got found guilty for killing uh, uh, George Floyd. You know what I'm saying? So the troops in Minneapolis had uh, dispatched National Guards and troops there to quell, quell any, um, any riots or, or turmoil or uproars or whatever, whatever. So you do have troops that are up in there. And, you know, curfews and so on and so forth, you know, so, you know, the mainstream media ain't going to put this out there like that. You know, they ain't going to put it out there at all. You know what I'm saying? But here you see on a, on a um, screen from the New York Times, National Guard troops called to U.S. cities ahead of Chauvin's verdict. All right. That Edomite. And these were all like three days ago. So you still got troops there. You still got troops stationed throughout the United States, you know, amid this whole, you know, thing, you know, the, the sting thing thing. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? This doubt, the, the thing was a perfect reason to have the troops stationed throughout the United States, you know? So they're here. They're they already there. They're they here to stay. You know what I'm saying? They're here to stay. It says... Uh, from military.com, two guardsmen returned to duty after being shot at Minneapolis. 3,000 troops braced for unrest. So they there, you know, they was there for the verdict of this whole thing. And, you know, ain't no coincidence that that um you have, as soon as this man was found guilty, you had a, a, a so-called black woman, a 16, 15-year-old young woman that was shot dead. Um, when the police was uh, upon arrival of the police officer who killed her, you know, as she was about to stab another young uh, uh, so-called black woman, Israelite woman, you know, so it ain't going to end. This thing ain't going to end. All right. This thing is not going to end like the scriptures say in Luke, the 12th chapter that the Lord, matter of fact, let me get it real quick. That the Lord, Yahweh Shah is coming back. And before he does. There's going to be turmoil. Luke 12 and 49, I, I am come to send fire on the earth. That's what Yahweh Shah is about to do, send fire upon this earth. Thermonuclear destruction is about to pelt this place and destroy it to the foundation. It says, I am come to send fire on earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? So the fire is already being kindled. You can read about that in 2nd Ezra 15 and 2nd Ezra 16. It talks about exactly what we're seeing happening in this world today. All right, turmoil civil unrest, you know what I'm saying? All these things are happening while Yahweh Shah is getting ready to come back. So before you come back, there's already going to be a fire kindled, all right? So going back to this, just to read on um, um, some more articles, some headlines, it says, men, man charged in shooting that injured National Guard soldier. So now they're shooting back at, now they're shooting at National Guard soldiers. All right, they're shooting at the, the National Guard soldiers, you know. It says, suspect arrested after drive-by shooting at Minnesota Guardsmen. Among Minnesota refugees, military presence in Twin Cities stirs. Um, 
It says Minnesota Guard troops standing down as Twin Cities are quiet after verdict. So now they are uh, standing down, which they're they're going back in um what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for, man? They're still in other words, they're still gonna be present, but they are in um um I wanna say hibernation, so to speak. But there's another word for it when a when a, a cell when a sleep like a sleeper cell, you know, they 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 there, but they like sleeper cells right now, waiting to be activated again. You know what I'm saying? And they are gonna be activated again. And this is not just Minneapolis. It's gonna happen, you know, uh, uh statewide, nationwide. Nationwide, all right? Now that these elites are fanning the flame. They are fanning the flame, and the right event is gonna take this place off like a time bomb. All right, that right, that right, perfect event is going to have this place take off like a time bomb, you know. In the midst of all of this, they saying peace and safety, numbers are going down, people are getting, you know, um, the thing, the needle, at a at a high rate. So things are going to so called get better, but at the same time, you got jobs that are opening up and they're hiring, but guess what? Nobody is filling out those applications. Why is nobody filling out those applications? Because people are complacent. They, they're getting money. They're getting by. You know, they're getting more money than they probably get by filling out those applications. So businesses are going to sink. They're going to continue to sink, continue to go under. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of things are happening all at once. You know, all things are happening. And the Lord warned us about these things. And... It's like how you got these troops round about um, America. Really, they set up to be to be encamped around Israel, Jacob. Just like the scriptures say in Jeremiah Jeremiah thirty, that is going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. This is Jacob's trouble. Just like it, just like it happened in history. This is going to be worse, according to Daniel's twelve chapter. This is going to be worse. You got examples of this. It happened during the time of seventy A.D. The Roman Empire, when when we when we when we was cast out of our our homeland, it happened during the Greek the Greek rule under Antiochus, Epiphanes, all right, the fourth. And I'm gonna read this real quick in the book of uh, Maccabees, First Maccabees, the second chapter. Um, and I read at forty nine on down. <clears throat> it says, "Now when the time drew near that Mattathias should die." He said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength in the time of destruction and wrath of indignation. Now, when you read about it, this is when, you know, the Greek uh, Antiochus was pretty much terrorizing. He was terrorizing Israel, killing, slaughtering, killing um, women that didn't circumcise their children, you know, profaning the temple, destroyed the temple, looted the temple, sacrificed unlawful uh, abominations on a, on a altars, set up altars for different idols. You know what I'm saying? Set up, They set up um, military around the temples around Israel where Edomites was dwelling. You know what I'm saying? So they pretty much encamped around Israel during this time, as well as they did 70 AD, and as well as they're about to do on an even larger scale in a more intense uh, scale than it than has ever been before Okay and That's why you see these troops Setting up Throughout America Alright They not They not here for what they say they're here for They're here because They're about to prepare to unleash all hell On You Israelites Two thirds Okay So Mattathias is talking to his sons Letting them know that they're about to stand up and fight you know, Okay They're about to stand up and fight Against these devils all right. Instead of just sitting there, and, you know, getting put to death and dying, which in these times, Yahweh Shah is going to fight for us. All right. Yahweh Shah, he's going to be the one to fight for us. He's going to raise up his men with spiritual powers to fight against the enemy. All right. The angels are going to stand up for the men of the Lord in these times because this is the last. This is it. Esau, Esau got a thing where he strike, you know, three strikes and you out. Well, same thing for you devils. All right, three strikes and you out of here, man. You, this is the this this third time you are out of here, man. You're done. Okay. It says now, therefore, my sons, be be zealous for the law, 
and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. And that's the mentality we should have. All right. Be zealous for the law and give our lives for the covenant of our fathers. All right. Give our lives. You got to be ready to sacrifice yourself and die for this truth when these devils come, because they're going to implement a system just like they've always been trying to do. And they're going to implement a system where you're going to have to show that you worship in the king, worship in the king, uh, King Esau, the King Esau, the devil, the beast in the system. And the way you prove that is going to be that they're going to make this chip mandatory and you're going to have to um, submit and take it. And if not, you're going to die. All right. Which is that's the hour of temptation. That's going to be the king's commandment. All right. When I say the king's commandment, I'm talking about Esau, Edom, the elites. That's going to be their commandment that everybody's going to have to worship him. All right. But you, we, we will have to have the mind state that we ready to die, ready to die for this. All right, and that the Lord is going to redeem us from this, you know, through our righteous acts of faith, because that's what it all boils down to. All right. It says, call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall ye receive great honor and everlasting in an everlasting name. Just like the scriptures say, things are written for time are written for our learning. All right. That we through patience and faith may have comfort. You know, uh, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so we got to know and we do know the things that our forefathers have done in their times. Just like, for instance, you read read about the Maccabees, you know, they were valiant, uh, valiant men, courageous men, all right, men of courage, all right? And their men are back here again today. So it says, was not Abraham found faithful in temptation? And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. So his faith was accounted for righteousness. And that's that's the perfect example. That's one of the top examples. Because scriptures talk about the righteousness, which is of faith. You know, and faith without works is dead. So you got to show your works by your faith and your faith by your works to be accounted for righteousness. It says, Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. Phineas, our father, being um in being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. All right, when you read about that, you know um, what he do? He he slew the Simeonite and the Midianite. You know because Israel was was going off at that time, and what they was doing was uh, worshiping the gods of these other nations. All right, it says. It says here Jesus, but it's Yahweh in Hebrew, which is talking about Joshua for fulfilling the word. Because Joshua means Yahweh, Yahweh means Joshua means deliverer. He's the deliverer. It says Yahweh for fulfilling the word was made a judge in Israel. Caleb for bearing witness before the congregation received the heritage of the land. David for being merciful possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Elias, for being zealous and fervent, for the law was taken up into heaven. And Ananias, Azarias, and Masiel, by believing, were saved out of the flame. Book of Daniel's um, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego being delivered out of the fire, the fiery furnace, weren't even burnt, not a hair in the head perished. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. The angels shut the mouth of the lions that they couldn't even open a mouth or even show any harm towards Daniel. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. So no one that put their trust in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh shall be overcome at all. You know what I'm saying? So in the times that are coming, touching back on this martial law, all right, because martial law is going to be the way they're going to try to, you know, encamp round about Jerusalem in these times. But Jerusalem is a people before a place, which is you Israelites. You can have martial law troops trying to overthrow Israel. But the only ones that are going to get caught up in this are going to be the two thirds, just like in, in those times. All right. In these times. But the Lord is going to uh, deliver those that put their trust in him. Those that stood stiffly for the word of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. 
all right, that that declared the Lord in these last cause in these last days, because we in the last of the last days. There ain't gonna be um all of Israel being conquered again by the enemy. This is the last of the last. This is when Yahweh is coming back to fight. That's why the scripture said that that he will not meet thee as a man. All right, Yahweh Shah will not meet his enemies as a man. He's coming to meet his enemies as a as an all power. All right. As an angelic force with spiritual powers and to raise up his army of elect 144,000 men. All right. So we at the end of the end. This is going to be a whole different scenario, storyline, and this is going to be written down in histories forever. So it says, fear not the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worms. So who's a sinful man? Esau, Edom. All right. Fear not the words of a sinful man. So we don't fear what this devil's talking about. What he's gonna do? He want to do a global reset. He want to, you know, uh, um, according to Georgia Godstone, reduce the Earth population to to uh, five hundred million. You know, he want to uh, have people uh, tagged up, and if you don't get tagged up, you won't be able to buy, sell, eat. Revelation, the thirteenth chapter, the mark of the beast. Those are the words of a sinful man. It says, for his glory shall be dung, a.k.a. shit and worms. All right, it's going to be wasted. Okay, it's going to be wasted. It's going to be shit. It's going to perish forever like his own dung, like the scriptures say. And worms, which worm is representing uh, corrosion. All right, when somebody dies, their body's corroded and worms eat them up. Okay, that's the words of a sinful man. Esau, you know. It says, today he shall be lifted up. And tomorrow, he shall not be found. So today he's lifted up. The Most High raised up Esau to show his wrath. All right, the scriptures talk about in the Book of Romans that the Most High raised up the vessel of dishonor to show his wrath, and sh and then to show mercy towards the vessel of honor, which is Israel. Okay, the Most High raised you Edomites up. He raised you up. You the same people coming back that that uh, went against Israel in the ancient world. You the same people coming back. All right, you're going to fall just like you did in the ancient kingdoms. America is going to be fall and it's never going to be found anymore again. All right, so that's that's a message to you elites. You know your time is short. Your time is up. The, the covenant was not for you. It's not for you. The blessing is not for you. You living in the time of your blessing, the sword, your military might, the fatness of the, uh, the earth. It says, today you shall be lifted up and tomorrow you shall not be found because he has returned into his dust. And his thought is come to nothing. So your vain thought is nothing, man. What you want to do, you know, you want to do this, you want to do that, you want a global reset, you want to bring in a digital uh, currency where you could track every single thing. You want to be like the Most High. All right? All of that is going to come to nothing. You know, you devils are done. You're out of here. You're through. Okay, the Most High is about to... My most I was about to wipe you away just like a bad dream. It's gonna be easy. like every day we wake up, wake up from a dream, we start a new day. Well, it's gonna be a dawn of a new day in the kingdom of heaven. All right, Esau, Edom, his rulership, all the rulerships of this devil, it's gonna be like a bad dream. America, um, when we came here, it's gonna be like a bad dream. Years of slavery till now, all this is gonna be like a bad dream. We're gonna wake up in the kingdom and we're gonna be living in glory, righteousness. Law, statute, and commandments, and it will pause eternal rest forever and ever. So th that's what we're looking forward to, and that's the reward that's coming for those that wait patiently upon Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shah, man. You know what I'm saying? So just remember and reflect the things written for time, are written for our learning. All right, the Heavenly Father got it all here. The manuscript is here. Isaiah 33 and 6 says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. So wisdom and knowledge, knowing and being wise is what's going to keep you stable when the world is in turmoil. All right. So I'm going to end the head. This is quick, edifying, strength to the point. Till next time, I say shalom to the elect. Shalom.